looking for magic cards at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 and you also get automatically entered into the M20 booster box giveaway which runs until July 15th. All right, let's go. Pack one, pick one. Our rare is Cavalier of Dawn. Pretty good. Maybe not the best Cavalier for limited, but still definitely above the curve. What else do we have? We've got the Silverback Shaman, one of the better commons. It's also a great card. Of course, our uncommons are pretty decent too. Gravedigger is always nice and limited. Nice two for one. We've got the Saddle, which... These types of equipments are pretty good and limited, since like by itself you get a 3-3 that cannot be blocked by more than one creature, which is almost a playable limited card. But uh, when our wolf gets dealt with, we still have the equipment that we can also move around, so definitely a lot better than it might appear at first glance. What else? I've got Siphon, which is okay removal, but I'm not taking this over like a Shaman or the Uncommons and the Rare. Probably just a Cavalier, but I don't know, could be convinced of something else here too. It is a pretty heavy commitment to whites. Not sure how white stacks up against some of the other colors in the set, but uh, on raw power, the Cavalier is pretty powerful. If we had to decide between Gravedigger, Saddle and Silverback, it's actually pretty close too. I think all three of these cards are quite close in power level. Saddle... I guess gets better the longer the game goes, and I've heard that uh, M20 is a pretty grindy format. So Saddle is going to be quite good in a long grindy game where you get a ton of time to equip and move around Saddle. Although Silverback is also pretty decent, just a 5-4 that replaces itself when it dies, unless it gets exiled. I think all three of these cards are close. Cavalier's probably slightly better than all of them, even though white might not be the best color necessarily. Yeah, the second ability on Cavalier is not super relevant. Artifacts or enchantments aren't super common, but there are cards like Vial of Dragonfire that might end up in our graveyard that we can get back with Cavalier. There's some auras, perhaps, if we end up with a green-white aura-based deck that uh, we can return. So the second ability is still somewhat relevant. But uh, yeah, let's take the rare and kind of see how it plays out here. Second pack. It's got some interesting cards too. So let's go over all the uncommons here. We've got the Wave Crasher, which is quite decent. You don't have to return the Wave Crasher itself, so you can just play it out as a 4-mana four 4-4 four four if you want to. And uh, if you have another sweet creature with an Enter the Battlefield ability, or your opponent maybe locked a creature underneath a Pacifism, you can bounce it back and get some value. And 4-mana four 4-4 four is not bad, so Wave Crasher is definitely pretty good. Yeah, you do have to return a creature, but if your board is empty, you don't have to return the Wave Crasher itself. Then we've got uh, Fan Lurker, which is a decent 2-drop uh, as well. Kind of an upgrade over Burgle Rats in most scenarios. We've got uh, Vanguard, which is quite good as well for maybe a red-white aggressive deck. 1-2 Flyer that spawns a 1-1 token that's tapped and attacking. Would actually be better if the token wasn't tapped and attacking, I think. Since now the token can often just like run into an opposing blocker and die on the spot. Instead of just being able to build up a huge army and then uh, maybe set up for a giant attack backed up by a pump spell, like an Inspire Charge. But uh, still pretty good. What else? We've got an Aerial Assault as OK removal, although not amazing if you're the aggressor. We've got a Chandra's Outrage as nice removal. We've got a Boreal Elemental as a nice flyer. So just a ton of powerful cards here. This set seems quite a bit more powerful than M19 in comparison. Just a lot more powerful commons and uncommons, so it could go either way. The only white card here that's single white is Aerial Assault that we might be interested in. I guess we should also point out Battalion. If we can get multiples, this is a pretty decent card, but uh, I don't think I'm second picking it. So Aerial Assault is the only mono white card, which, I mean, is a fine card. It's not amazing. Of course, it's going to be better in like a blue-white flyer archetype. If we want to dip into a second color, we could take the Vanguard. And we would like to play the Cavalier. So it's not like we're going to move off white very easily. Even though the Vanguard would commit us to a two color pair right away, which maybe isn't great. Whereas if we, let's say, take the Wave Crasher, 
and then open a great black card and then white seems cut off but blue black isn't then we can still easily pivot into a different color pair whereas if we take the vanguard we might be kind of stuck in red white or at least white and uh, based on power level vanguard is fine but it might not be as good as maybe some of these other cards that's kind of a tricky decision chandra's outrage is also great um although we would have a double red and a triple white card to start with which is maybe not the best all right looks like people like the sky knight vanguard we'll give it a shot here see if maybe boros aggro works out all right some pretty good options here as well the two cards i'm most interested in here i think are the chandra's outrage as a nice removal spell and the loyal pegasus if we can be a nice low curve aggressive deck then this can be a pretty powerful threat all right looks like people like the outrage makes sense Ooh, how good is dragon mage seven mana five five flyer when it deals combat damage to player each player discards their hand then draw seven cards this seems pretty good as kind of a curve topper in an aggressive deck where we can realistically empty our hands by the time the dragon mage hits although it can definitely be a drawback as well giving the opponent seven cards and seven mana is a lot there's also goblin smuggler which is probably kind of a safer pick can maybe get in one or two attacks as a 2-2 haste and then can give something else evasion i guess it works pretty well with the sky knight vanguard as well so we've got a bit of synergy there uh, raise the alarm could be fine if we're trying to go wide with maybe some go wide payoffs like the plus two plus one to our team there's a, not a few other kind of pump effects that pump all our creatures plays well with the vanguard that's trying to go wide as well so i think we've got like three considerations here dragon mage raise the alarm and smuggler i'm thinking smuggler is probably the safer pick and looking at the other colors i don't think we're really missing out on anything like the scorpion's a fine card but not good enough that we should go out of our way to pick it and none of those other cards seem too inspiring what do we have here colossus hammer doesn't seem great maybe as a sideboard option in like a super grindy matchup with a ton of removal yeah i don't think this is amazing what about diamond knights three mana one one vigilance probably choose red at this point and then it grows the more red cards we play seems okay if a little unexciting uh, there is the Kellen Raider as just an okay 4-drop. Bird Grabber could be fine if um, we pick up some more flyers. We've got the Sky Knight Vanguard already. We've got the Vial of Dragonfire to combo with our Cavalier of Dawn to get it back from the graveyard. Not the most efficient removal out there. And we're not in blue, so we're not going to be able to combine it with the Weaponsmith. So not too exciting, but has a little bit of synergy going for it. So my guess is here we're deciding between Kelden Raider, Bird Grabber, and Diamond Knights. Yeah, that is a fair point. The Grabber is not our Goblin. We already have a Smuggler. Maybe we can pick up some Goblin Synergies. There's not a ton of them, but worth pointing out. All right, looks like the Knight is victorious here. So at the very least, we could pick up a Dual Land in our colors. So Red-White seems like a pretty good place to be looking at these last couple packs seeing a lot of playable cards in red and white definitely the most represented color in this pack so once again we have a lot of options we've got two different two drops with the inquisitor that can gain first strike not like too powerful but the threat of activation can definitely be useful we've got another bird grabber if we end up with more flyers dawning angel is okay not the best in an aggressive deck where we maybe don't care about getting four as much as maybe wanting better stats but definitely still a playable card we've got another diamond knight and then we can think about the vial to go with cavalier infuriate as a decent combo trick or we can just pick up the lands since the format seems pretty deep in terms of playables so we're probably going to end up with enough playables overall so just improving our mana base to help us cast Cavalier, with, which is triple white. Outrage, which is double red, seems worth it. So given that none of these cards really seem too exciting and kind of replaceable overall, I think improving our mana base is probably going to be fine. 
All right, some decent options here. There's a Goblin Ringleader, which we talked about, maybe having some Goblin Synergies. I did not end up picking those Bird Grabbers, so we just have a Goblin Smuggler so far. Putting a 4-mana 2-2 Haste in the deck isn't something I want to do, so we really need to reveal at least one Goblin with a Ringleader for it to be worth it. Top 4 cards does get to see a few, but still doesn't seem amazing. Um, another Smuggler seems nice, also kind of synergizes with itself, since if we have two Smugglers we can just make one unblockable. And there's also Aerial Assault as just an okay removal spell. Although again, this is not at its best if we're the aggressor, since the opponent might not be attacking as much. And then uh, their creatures are not going to be tapped. But if we're in a racing situation, then of course the life gain can potentially come in handy if we've got some flyers. We do seem to have a little bit of evasion already here with the Smuggler, the Vanguard. So we are pretty good at kind of keeping up a racing situation where the opponent, even if they have a few blockers out, can't really stop a card like Smuggler or Vanguard from hitting them, which is going to force them to get into a racing situation where the Assault comes in handy. So I think the more evasive creatures we have, even if they're not necessarily flying creatures, the better Aerial Assault gets. So the Ringleader is kind of a high variance pick, might pay off if we pick up a ton more goblins, but as it stands, doesn't seem super exciting. Smuggler is just a solid pick, which is going to be good in our deck no matter what. Assault could be okay. And then I guess there's also the Soldier, which we might wheel a Soldier from the first pack we opened, but uh, we would need quite a few more for this to be exciting. I think like three or four is the magic number for the Foot Soldier, and I guess it does pair well with the Smuggler, but we might still want a second Smuggler before picking the Foot Soldier here. So I think I'll take another Smuggler for now. Alright, what do we have here? Not a ton of options for Red and White. I don't think the Scorch Spitter is great, although I guess it does pair well with the Goblin Smuggler, as it can still get into damage repeatedly, so it's not the worst. Um, Wand is a pretty expensive pinger, may or may not make the cuts if we have like no mana sinks it can be fine i guess it combos with cavalier of dawn as well we can destroy our own wand to deal five damage to anything and then get the wand back from our graveyard later so we do have a bit of synergy with the wand it can potentially like close out the game if there's a board stall if we don't have any mana sinks um otherwise i'm probably looking at the spitfire as not a super exciting card but uh, potentially okay with the Goblin Smuggler, can get in maybe one or two attacks by itself if we draw it early, and then the Smuggler can make it evasive to get in more damage. And we are playing best of three here, so even out of the sideboard, the Wand could maybe do some work, but we might just want to pick up those cheap, aggressive creatures. Alright, got another Spitter. That's fine. Maybe pick up some elemental synergies as well. So I guess we've got two options remaining here, Maniacal Rage and Elemental. Elemental's not an exciting card, 5 mana, 5-4. Five, Cards have gotten better over time, but uh, I guess it's an elemental for potential elemental synergies alongside Double Spitter. And uh, otherwise there's Maniacal Rage, which doesn't really combo all that well with Goblin Smuggler, but could pair well with a Sky Knight Vanguard. Could pair well with a Scorch Spitter. Yeah, that's a good point as well. The bow does play okay with the Smuggler, since we can smuggle a creature through and maybe ping an opposing creature down. So that's not a bad combo necessarily, but still not too excited about the bow. Yeah, I guess we'll take the Maniacal Rage. Probably more likely to make the cut than the Elemental there. Ooh, wow, Loyal Pegasus Wheel. That's great. Pairs great with our cheap Scorch Spitters, letting us uh, attack right away. Plays well with Maniacal Rage if we can still attack with a second creature as well. Or maybe the Maniacal Rage allows us to attack with a second creature and then the Pegasus can keep attacking. Not gonna play either of these. Alright, got a Fire Elemental anyway. And more Maniacal Rages. Alright, and wow, Goblin Ringleader last pick, so I guess we might still be able to play that one, we'll see. Ooh. Well, this is a pretty stacked pack for us. 
two cards that I would be super happy with, both Master Splicer and Dracoseth. Although Dracoseth is pretty unbeatable if it gets to untap, even though it is 7 mana. But uh, yeah, I don't think we can pass up on Dracoseth. And then, yeah, we're not going to wield the Master Splicer, even though it would have been pretty nice, pairs well with our Cavalier as well, making another Golem. And provides two bodies if we're trying to go wide. But I uh, gotta take Dragon here. If this ever attacks, it's usually game over. And some more big scary creatures here with the Rotting Regisaur. Not really what we need. Pacifism seems like a totally fine pick. Nice two mana removal spell. Pack Massive would also be okay, just as a two drop with a mana sink ability, so in the late game it's still somewhat relevant. The Bird Grabber would be fine alongside our uh, other goblins here, Double Smuggler and Ringleader. But gotta take the Pacifism. Alright, so what do we have here? Shock seems fine. As a nice cheap removal spell. Uh, otherwise there's Aerial Assaults. I think I prefer Shock for now. And uh, we're probably gonna wheel something useful out of this pack, whether it's Assaults, maybe one for the sideboard, or a Predator as another Curve Topper. Alright, some nice options here too. So the Ancestral Blade is another one of those equipments cards that comes with a creature attached to it. So this is just a 2 mana 2 2 by itself and then later it turns into a 1 mana to equip plus 1 plus 1 which is quite decent. It's a pretty big fan of this card. Squad Captain could also be fine if we're going wide. Don't have a ton of token makers yet but we might pick up a few more in the future. Raise the Alarm, one of them. There's the Vial to go with our Cavalier. Angelic Gift can be fine. But I think I like the blade here. Alright. Another interesting decision. A second shock or a third smuggler. I do think smuggler is quite good and it doesn't get worse in multiples. That's just a nice evasive creature. Shock, nice cheap removal spell. Nothing else really that jumps out. Inspiring captain's not too inspiring. And chaplain's not really what we need here. Alright, we'll take the shock. The Smuggler does have synergy with the Ringleader if we want to try and run that, but Shock is the more efficient uh, card here. There is a bit of tension though with this Dracoseth. Being a 7-drop means we probably can't cheat on lands too much, even though maybe the rest of our deck could get away with playing fewer lands. What do we have here? Got lots of lights. Doesn't seem great. It's one of those Toughness Matters cards. We've got the Aegis, which also doesn't seem too powerful. Tectonic Rift, I guess, could be a finisher, but I'm not too interested in this type of effect. Um, I guess there's a Raptor, it's just an okay flyer. Can maybe pair well with the Loyal Pegasus or the Smuggler. Can get it back with the Cavalier, I guess. It's not a, an amazing card. But uh, it's kind of a curve filler. Uh, otherwise there's a Vial as well to maybe synergize with Cavalier. But we already have double shock, so it doesn't seem super exciting. I think I'll take the Raptor, but I'm not sure if I'll play it. Alright, Chandra Spitfire plays quite well with double Scorch Spitter. As we found out playing some uh, Constructed earlier. So those could pair well with each other. Uh, pairs well with Double Shock, pairs well with Chandra's Outrage, so we've got a lot of synergies. Then there's also the Lavakin Brawler, which pairs well with other elementals we have, including those Scorch Spitters. So yeah, I think I like the Spitfire. Just pairs well with a lot of the cards we have, can even make it unblockable with the uh, Smuggler and then make it big. More Ringleaders. But how many goblins do we have so far? Not that many, just double smuggler, another ringleader which may or may not make the cut. So, not entirely sold on the ringleader, but I guess if we pick up another one, we are more incentivized to pick up more goblins. What else do we have here? Moment of Heroism has kind of a pump spell. 
We've got Airstrike, which maybe makes for an okay or a sideboard card in Buster 3. If we need to deal with flyers for just one mana. Or we could take the Raise the Alarm to kind of work on our Go White theme. Because right now our deck, while it does have some okay individual cards, it's kind of lacking an overall theme, I guess you could say. It's not the most synergistic focused deck. If we pick up another Ringleader and pick up more Goblins, that could be one approach. We could focus more on the Go White theme with Raise the Alarm. Maybe focus more on the elemental synergies we've got going here with the Spitfire and the Spitters. Setting up for maybe a Go White theme here. Nothing we want outside of uh, Angelic Gifts, which could be an okay card. I guess we'll take the bow, even though I doubt we'll play it. Don't think we need a Chaplain. Still not a fan of Aegis. Probably just take the Wand for the sideboard. Another Gifts. Alright, I guess we take a Chaplain now. Alright, so our deck has some okay things going for it. Like we've got some individually good cards with the Blade, we've got Outrage, Dracoseth, Cavalier of course. Um, but it's shaping up to be a more mid-rangey deck instead of like a hyper-focused aggressive deck. Which means that the Spitters might not be amazing, but we'll see. Alright, usually you don't want to open Ley Lines as your rares. What else do we have? Not much. We've got a Sentry, 3 mana, 3, 2, when it dies, put a counter on a creature. I guess it's playable, if unexciting. This isn't really an Act of Treason deck, I don't think. And nothing else really jumps out. So I guess we'll take the Sentry. Alright, this is a bit better. Multiple good options here. The Hydra is a pretty powerful rare, but we're looking at Chandra as a nice card to synergize with some of our elementals. And just a double shock is pretty good by itself. We've got a Spitfire, which would be good as well. Not a Racy Alarm for the Go White theme, a Brawler for the elemental synergies. But yeah, I think it's between Spitfire and Chandra, probably leaning Chandra here. Can maybe even ramp us into a Dracoseth on turn 5, which would be pretty exciting. Alright, what do we have here? How good is Marauding Raptor in this deck? 2 mana, 2, 3 makes our creatures 1 cheaper, but it's dealt 2 damage on entry. So it doesn't seem very good, considering we have cards like Goblin Smuggler that would die on the spot. It's okay with like Dracoseth and Cavalier, but probably more of a liability than anything. Got another Shock, which seems fine. Not a land, which is okay, but probably take the shock over it still. And a squad captain for maybe the go white theme. So three major considerations here. Land, shock, and captain. So we're probably going to end up with enough playables no matter what. It's just about increasing the quality of our cards. The land would increase the quality of our mana base. Captain seems better than a fire elemental for the most part. Um, and a shock could be another nice cheap removal spell, although we already have double shock. And then pacifism, outrage is more removal, Chandra, and then of course Dracoseth as well. So I don't know if we need a third shock. Eh, Chad agrees, I'll stake the crag. Alright, some good options here as well. We've got a reduce to ashes as a nice removal spell to get rid of bigger things. The fact that this exiles is also relevant against the Silverback, which draws a card when it dies, but if you exile it, then the opponent doesn't. Or we can just take another Loyal Pegasus, which does play well in multiples, since they can attack with each other, um, and kind of speeds up our deck a little bit. There's also Evolving Wilds as another land, but I don't think we need to take it now, since we already have two Crags, and these seem like pretty good playables. Even the Brawler would be okay since we've got a few elementals to synergize with it. I think this is close, reduce over Pegasus. Don't have a ton of expensive stuff up our curve, and we are going to probably need to play 17 lands for this Dracoseth. So reduce would be fine, um, but I think Pegasus would be pretty good too. And 
And... I don't think we're too excited about the Uncaged Fury, not the best combo with like a Scorch Spitter doubling its power, or essentially doubling its power. Berserker seems like a totally main deckable card, as kind of a 3-1 attacker that we can maybe... I guess it's a little awkward with Angelic Gift since we can't even enchant it with our own Angelic Gift to give it flying, so a bit of a nombo there. Uh, but if you happen to be playing against a white deck, then it's pretty great. And otherwise, it's still like a playable card. We can, I guess, target it with the Smuggler and make it unblockable. Scuttle Mud doesn't seem too exciting, even though it can ramp us into Dracoseth. So yeah, we'll take the Berserker. Another Smuggler's pretty exciting. So we'll happily take that. And don't think we need a third Maniacal Rage. I'll take an Aegis for the sideboard, I guess. Alright, the Chandra Spitfire Wheel, that's great. And... How good is Manifold Key with the second ability? With Triple Smuggler, I don't think it's great. Probably just take an Act of Treason for the sideboard if we're playing against some big green creatures. Alright, Brawler could make the cut. Don't think we need another Aegis. How good is Salvager of Ruin? Doesn't seem great, but I guess it has a bit of synergy with Cavalier. I don't know, I guess I'll just take the Uncommon for the Vault here. 2-drop if you need a 2-drop. Alright, so I don't think our deck's amazing. It's not the most synergistic out there. But, uh, you know, Dracoseth could win a game by itself. I've got some okay removal. And we have the potential of having an aggressive start. And then Triple Smuggler can help us close out the game as well. So we'll see. So let's kind of sort out our deck here. Not sure about the Maniacal Rages, not sure if we need the Raise the Alarm. Angelic Gifts is also maybe... The 2-drops seem fine, the 1-drops seem fine, the 3-drops seem okay. Then how good is a Ringleader? So the only goblins we have are three Smugglers. So let's uh, pull up the Hyper Geometric Calculator here. We're looking at like 30-ish percent at most. So I don't think Ringleader's making the cut. And what else? The Raptor's cuttable. Feral Mantle's cuttable, even though I guess we picked up some Elemental Synergies. Scorch Spitter could be cuttable too, although it does play well with the Chandra Spitfire. Imagine having a board with Chandra Spitfire, Goblin Smuggler, and Scorch Spitter. We can make the Scorch Spitter unblockable. Attack with it, deal 2, Spitfire grows, this deals 4. That's a lot of damage. So I kind of like this combo potential we've got going. Plus it's an extra elemental for the Brawler. The only issue with the Spitter is that if we don't have a Smuggler, we don't have a ton of ways to like push it through for damage, since we don't have any pump spells. Um, don't love the elemental, but it's kind of just a little bit of beef at the top end of our curve. Again, we're probably going to need to play 17 lands if we realistically want to play Dracoseth. So might as well just have a 5 mana 5-4 five instead of wasting our mana. How do we feel about Angelic Gift in this deck? It's a bit redundant with Goblin Smuggler. It's a Nombo with the Berserker with protection from whites. It's okay with the Spitter. If we can go like turn one spitter if we don't have a turn two play just enchant it with angelic gift it's not the worst just make this more difficult to block draw a card um, diamond knight is definitely cuttable too right now we would probably name red with the diamond knights since we seem to have more red cards and white cards so this can kind of grow over time so if we draw it early it can be fine the sentry is not amazing but just gives us like a random body. Bit of a number with the Goblin Smuggler, I guess. So yeah, I'm not too hot on this Angelic Gifts. I don't think Raise the Alarm really does much in our deck. 
We don't have any payoffs for going wide in the first place. So I don't think uh, Raise the Alarm is where we want to be. Uh, Raptors, pretty mediocre as well. It's an extra flyer to maybe help push the Pegasus through for damage. But with a triple smuggler, we should have enough ways to get the Pegasus in for damage. The Spitfires can also attack alongside it. So even though it is an artifact, we can return with Cavalier. I'm not too high on it. And that's another reason to maybe want a Diamond Knight, is that we can get it back with Cavalier. Angelic Gift also synergizes with Cavalier. So maybe we just, like play one Angelic Gift, but not both. As just an extra way to maybe gain evasion and an extra enchantment to get back with Cavalier. So we need to make two more cuts if we want to play 17 lands. One issue this deck has is that it doesn't deal very well with Flood. We don't have any card draw, really. We don't have any mana sinks for the most part. Just have like an Ancestral Blade that we can move around for one mana. Inquisitor can gain First Strike, but that doesn't matter too much. So this deck is kind of going to struggle with Flood. So I could even see playing 16 lands despite having a 7 drop and just kind of hope to eventually cast it. We do have Chandra to ramp. Yeah, I kind of fear that uh, if we play 17 lands, we're going to just have a few games where we flood out and really don't have much else going on. That's maybe a reason to want to want in the main deck as a card that synergizes with the Spitfire. Can deal one damage to the opponent, pump the Spitfires, or can just ping off smaller creatures. But yeah, we could just go 16 lands, cut the Fire Elemental, so we have a slightly lower curve and try and make that work instead. So right now we are at 40 cards. I think I'll stick to 17, 16 and see how it works out, and then if we feel like we want the extra land, we can always reconfigure in between games. Uh, so I think this would be my build at the moment. Just a healthy dose of 2-drops, some nice evasive 3-drops. I think Sentry is probably the most cuttable 3-drop out of those. So this is potentially a card that could go in favor of something else. The 4 seem fine, the 5 seem fine, and Dracoseth, of course, card that can win a game by itself. So if we were to cut at the Steadfast Sentry, which I could see, what would we replace it with? Could be the Wands, giving us an extra Mana Sink and combo with Spitfire. I guess like another Angelic Gift could be fine. Raptor could be okay. Or we could just play a Fire Elemental anyway. Alright, people like the Wands. Fair enough. So I think I'll play the Wands just to kind of try it out. Plays okay with the Spitfire, bit of synergy with the Cavalier. And we'll cut the Sentry, which is kind of replaceable. Alright, so I think we'll give this a shot, then taking a look at our mana base. Do need triple white for Cavalier. So last time I checked, I think we needed like 13 white sources to reliably cast Cavalier on turn 5, which is not going to happen. But um, we can try to get close. So right now we have 9 white sources, 9 red sources basically. We do have plenty more red than white. We also need double red for Outrage, red for the turn 1 Spitfire. I don't think we can go above 7 planes, otherwise it's going to be tricky to cast some of our spells on curve. But 7-7 uh, seven, seven seems fine. Alright, let's uh, choose our sleeve, choose some fancy basic lands. And... Uh, We'll get going here in a second. That's actually a good name, just name it Hagrid, the Dragon Smuggler. Since we do have a dragon and we do have two Goblin Smugglers. Alright, Hagrid it is. Alright, we'll be on the play. Yep, we'll keep this and then hope to draw a third land or maybe a two drop. So Pegasus is just gonna hang out on defense for now, but next turn could already be attacking. Alright, that's fine. So a little bit punished for the tap land next turn potentially, but at least now we have both triple white and double red, which we both need. Shock could potentially kill a creature that's about to be equipped by the axe, which is good. 
Removal would be bad since potentially the Pegasus would no longer be able to attack as well. So ideally they just play a creature that dies to the shock. Ooh, Smuggler was a great draw. Alright, looks like we're just going to be curving out this game. And our opponent's already down to 10. We've got Chandra, which represents potentially 4 damage. Shock another 2 damage here. And then Smuggler can just start using its ability. Although Siphon was a pretty good play here, getting the opponent a bit of life. Alright, so what are we doing next? We've got a ton of options. Could even go Chandra, minus one, play a score spitter, or we can just play the Brawler. I kind of like just playing the Brawler, honestly. Just add more to the board, and then Chandra can maybe double up with the Shock if we draw land to kill a four toughness creature. Seems fine. It's a little bit too early, I think, to start going face with Chandra. An extra and a plus one from Chandra could also pump the Brawler even more, potentially. So we're not in a bad spot, but we'll see. This axe hasn't really done much for the opponent yet. Undead Servants. Pretty easy pickings for this shock. So I think here I like shocking the Servant, playing Chandra, plusing to pump the Brawler. And then our opponent's almost dead. I guess let's see. Shock this for. So this pumps itself. So this is three, five, six, seven. I guess they're just dead right now. Unless their opponent has a shock, which I don't think they do. And both abilities would kill here, both uh, two damage or the plus one. Alright, so that was a pretty nice draw. Drawing that Smuggler when we didn't have a play otherwise was pretty good. So deck seems to be working. So our opponent's on red-black. I didn't see a ton of their deck. It seemed like a pretty mid-rangey black deck. Not too aggressive necessarily. So the Berserker's not going to be at its best here. They don't seem to be playing white. But still just a fine two-drop. I don't think we're cutting it. The Elemental lines up fine against the Agony, dealing 3 damage to it. Uh, can attack past the 3-2. That's about the only change I could see making, just bringing in the Fire Elemental. Especially now that we're going to be on the draw. Game's going to maybe go a little bit longer, we're going to have more time to draw or additional land to play it. And then what are we taking out? Don't really want to cut the early game stuff, since I still want to keep up the pressure. Not sure how good this wand is going to be. If the game drags out, it's a nice mana thing to have access to. I think I'll shave the wand for now. Didn't see any wand toughness creatures so far. Alright, nice opening hand. Third land, and this hand is pretty great. Alright, interesting. What's going on? What's going on here? Alright, uh, so which one drop to lead with? I guess Spitter makes the more s most sense here. Because next turn we presumably would just want to play the 2 drop anyway. If we play uh, Spitter here, next turn we could go Pegasus plus Shock. I think I play the Spitter. Well, I guess I'll let uh, Chandra do the narration. She's got a lot to say, apparently. A shock takes out Spitter. Alright, let's play Berserker. Alright, so we've got our shock again to maybe interact with a creature. Ooh, Soren. Didn't see any vampires in the previous game, so Soren's just gonna plus. Probably want to just play it safe and take Soren out here. We've got Dranko Seth in hand, so we're kind of aiming for a long game anyway. So I'm not necessarily trying to get my opponent dead right now. I would rather just kind of deal with their 
cards and then let the game come to a natural conclusion once we hit seven mana for Dracoseth. Alright, and that Servant, again a good target for this Shock, so we can play Pegasus and Angelic Gift this turn. Again, protection from white, meaning we can't enchant the Berserker with the Angelic Gift. So I think we'd rather just play Pegasus, Shock the Servant, attack. So the best draw here would probably be something like a Chandra, letting us ramp into Dracoseth ahead of schedule. Brawler's pretty good too. So now we can Smuggler the Berserker, and attack with Pegasus plus Berserker, that seems fine, and add a Brawler to the board. And then maybe next turn we can Angelic Gifts. Alright, so this is a 1-3, 6 mana to deal 2 damage to an opponent or Planeswalker. It's going to turn into a 3-3 three, three here. And a Warchief is going to hang back on defense, so really seeing the value of kind of our evasive creatures here, Smuggler, Pegasus. And now we can gift the Brawler as well. Yeah, that's a good one too. So we could like not attack this turn in order to kill the Warchief with Reduced to Ashes. But I think we just have lethal if we tack over the course of two turns here. Alright, sweet, so that was a pretty swift victory. Didn't need to get all the way to seven for Dracoseth, but we had it in hand just in case. Hmm. Didn't think we can keep this one, sadly, even though it looks so appealing with the turn one score spitter and the shock. And the elemental synergies with Chandra. Man, if if one of these was a land, this would be a keep. But as it stands, I think it's just a bit too risky. Alright, not not as exciting as our previous hand, but I guess we'll keep this. And what do we put on the bottom? Probably one of our removal spells. Um guessing the shock. It's either the Shock or the Reduced Ashes. Like, we don't have a ton of early plays here, so I could see Shock just helping us catch up. But we already have three lands, so we're pretty close to casting the Reduce. Although I guess Pacifism already deals with a large creature. I guess we'll bottom the Reduce here. And then we're looking at turn three Diamond Knights, probably naming a red since we've got more red cards than white. I think putting planes on the bottom would be a little greedy. Even though, of course, there's a risk of uh, drawing a few too many additional lands afterwards, we do still have a 7 drop in our deck that we might want to cast. Alright, fine target for shock. Good shock right now, or we could wait to grow the Diamond Knight. This could let the opponent ramp. And it does attack into the Diamond Knight at least once. But since we don't have much going on, I think we want to try and get more value out of this Diamond Knight. So I'll wait to shock the Elemental. And we did pick up Angelic Gift, but again, our deck just has so many more red cards and white cards. Alright, Brawler. It's a good one. Spitfire. Alright, so we do get to have an, a decent turn here at least. So I think I like playing Spitfire pre-combats. Attack with a 2-2 Knight. If they block with a Brawler, we can shock the Brawler instead of the Amber Cat. And if they take it, I just shock the Amber Cats anyway, I think. Could also save the shock to grow the Spitfire. Opponent's going to take it. I think I'm supposed to shock the Amber Cat here. It also threatens to pump the Brawler even more. Yeah. 
And then next turn I can Angelic Gift to Knight, maybe Pacifism on the Brawler, we'll see. Right, nothing from our opponents. Maybe hanging on to a Counterspell here. So, if this is a Chandra's Outrage, going for Angelic Gift on Knight would be a bad idea. So I think we either Pacifism the Brawler, or we attack anyway with both and see what they do. And then we can still just play an Inquisitor second main. I guess if they counter the Inquisitor, then we are free to Angelic Gift. I guess that's fine. See what the response is. So yeah, they definitely have something. So I'm not going to go for the Angelic Gift. Just attack, see what they do. Yeah, just an Anticipate. Opponent does decide to block. So do we Angelic Gift now? To be mana efficient. Could still get punished by a Shock. I think I hold. Go for it next turn. Even though the mana efficiency could end up mattering. Alright. It's a great target for this pacifism. And Blade's not bad. Drawing a few too many white cards here. Would have been better to name white, as it turns out, but again, we've got more red cards coming up. So I'm not too worried. So we'll pacify this elemental. And then probably just Angelic Gift of Knights. Which is also a nice long-term plan. And I hope they don't have a Wave Crasher picking up our elemental. Shock grows the Diamond Knight up to a 4-4. Can maybe pump the Spitfire. So we are getting close to killing the opponent if they don't interact. Ooh. That's a nice one, Golos. Can search up a land. They're still pretty far from using the ability here, but still just a 3-5. And a healer. Alright. So, this does hit pretty hard. Don't think we're blocking, though. Loyal Pegasus. Alright, so now what's... If we... Shock, then we're basically dealing um, four additional damage. This represents six damage by itself. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then next turn we could have lethal. That seems okay, just to go face here. And then we can uh, play the blade and play the pegasus as well. Now that they're tapped out, it seems like a good opportunity to make this play. Could also move the blade. I think we're better off just playing it and playing the Pegasus this turn. And then we can shun block with a token on the brawler if we need to. Could also double block. Alright, opponent has seen enough. They didn't have an answer for the flyers. Alright, not bad. So that pacifism being pretty key. So we got there despite a mulligan. How do we want to adapt after sideboard? Opponent seems like a pretty mid-rangey teamer elemental deck with some pretty heavy hitters at the top of their curve. So getting in early points of damage is going to be important. Although the, the one drop is kind of annoying since it blocks most of our early game stuff pretty well. Act of Treason could be okay. I don't think Fire Elemental is the way to go since they seem to have a lot of creatures that can kind of block this reasonably well. Could see like an Aegis being okay just to get in one big attack. Tapping down a key creature. Another Angelic Gift could be fine. So what do we cut if we want to make room for Angelic Gifts? Maybe a Scorch Spitter, especially if we're going to be on the draw. They're going to have plenty of opportunities to block it. And a second Angelic Gift makes the first Scorch Spitter a little bit better, so I don't think I'm cutting it. 
just have more early game stuff to maybe target with a smuggler, to attack alongside Pegasus, to enchant with the Angelic Gift on turn 2. But shaving one seems okay. And yeah, not sure if we want anything else. Alright, this is going to be another Mulligan, sadly. Didn't think about maybe sideboarding out to Wands, that could have also made sense here. Well, this is another pretty brutal opener. Dracoseth not doing us any favors this time. Yeah, this is about as awkward as it gets. Although we already took a first Mulligan. I think we probably got to keep and just hope to draw a bunch of lands in a row. Put the Wand on the bottom. I mean, at least this hand has a game plan. If we do hit our land drops, we've got two removal spells and eventually a Dracoseth. And this time, Diamond Knight naming a red seems like a no-brainer. Yeah, I mean, we do have two dual lands in our deck, plus seven mountains, so we've got nine red sources to draw towards. Alright, opponent's got the airstrike out of the sideboard to deal with both artifacts and flyers, so that's a pretty good sideboard card against us that we'll have to keep in mind. For now, we can get in for one, play Diamond Knights. So if we draw a mountain, then we're still in it. And with three removal spells, we can definitely buy ourselves a lot of time until we can eventually get to Drunkoseth. Shock is a nice one. Alright, another airstrike. So opponent's got the right sideboard card for the matchup, that's for sure. Well, I think we just want a cantrip here. And hope they don't kill it. Maybe should have actually attacked first, but I doubt they're killing a 1-1 anyway. In case they did have some thing they wanted to play. So we've got a 1-1 soldier with flying. But our opponent's not doing much, so I guess that's good. There are a few flash creatures to keep in mind. There's like the rare wolf, the 4-4 with flash. That can be pretty brutal, but until we see it, I'm not gonna play around it. Alright, Dungeon Geist. It's not too bad. So, we could upkeep the Outrage, but the untap step already happened, so we're not going to get to untap the Smuggler, so I guess we might as well draw first here. Alright. Yeah, pretty straightforward Outrage here, I think. Do they have a Pump Spell? They do. Alright, it's kind of brutal, since now... We'll have to use another removal spell. I guess we still traded one for one and got two damage in. And we do have Reduced Ashes. If we didn't have Reduced Ashes, this would be a lot worse for us. Because Pacifism is not a great answer to a Dungeon Geist. Alright, we're slowly getting to Dracoseth, which presumably wins the game if we can get to it. And... Yeah, 3 damage is not enough to kill a Dracoseth, luckily. So let's attack and then reduce. Ooh, the second growth cycle. Yep. Well, at least we got those out of their hands, so they're not dealing a ton of damage with it, but the fact that they had the second one 
meant that they could save the Geist even through 5 damage. If this was the first growth cycle they cast, then Reduce would still kill the Geist. Alright, guess we'll uh, just have to wait until we get to Drunkostath to deal with the Geist. Could also pacifism it, since we're getting pretty low on life here. And they're in Teemur, so they're not gonna have an easy time killing a 7-7 dragon. So I'm not sure if we're supposed to pacifism the Geist here. Feels like a bit of a waste when Drakusath is so close. Kinda depends how soon we're gonna draw that 7th land. Maybe we're supposed to just play it safe, since if we do get to Drakusath and it survives, we're probably gonna win the game anyway. So we should kinda hedge against not drawing a land for a while. Which probably means just... Pacifying the Geist, and just attack for one, potentially trade off the Smuggler for the Amber Cat, although that seems kind of bad. The most conservative play would be to also hang back with the Smuggler to block the Amber Cat, which as it turns out would have been reasonable, so next turn we can consider that. The least conservative play would have been to hold on to Pacifism, and then attack with both. We did draw the land, so that's good. So Drakoseth is alive. And do we want to make any attacks? Because next turn they're just dead to Drakoseth attacking. So I think we might as well hang back. Prevent like a gross cycle from killing us out of nowhere. Don't want to have to block with Drakoseth, but I'm fine blocking with the other two. Alright, so yeah, Drakoseth, definitely a card that can win the game by itself, as we saw there. Nice aggressive opening hand with a random 7-drop dragon. It's fine. Again, I think I'm leading with the Spitter, just because we have one of each land and a shock as well. If we play Pegasus turn one, then turn two we can only play one of our red spells, whereas if we play Spitter we can go shock plus Pegasus. And of course Pegasus can't attack alone, whereas the Spitter can. So that's an interesting wrinkle here, Inquisitor. Not sure what we're supposed to play now. So if our opponent, let's say, kills a Spitter, then the Pegasus is not doing anything, whereas if we play Inquisitor it can still attack by itself. I think I like Inquisitor as just a more mana efficient play, since we don't know for sure whether or not we're going to play the Shock. Alright, Blade is a nice one. So I'll just attack, play a Blade, I think. Opponent does seem to have something here. Maybe a Disfigure, although we probably would have seen that earlier. Maybe just a pump spell they're holding. So we've got a nice curve out start. Alright, it's just a blade brand that they're gonna cycle to draw a card, fair enough. And a troll. Alright, troll kind of stops us in our tracks a little bit here. 3-3 three, three for 2, it's pretty efficient. So we could move the equipment, or we could attack with all, and then kind of two for one ourselves with the shock. But the thing here is that they could block the Scorch Spitter with the Barkai Troll. The troll will only have one damage on it, and then if we go to shock they can give it Hexproof, and it still wouldn't die. So that seems like a pretty awkward uh, interaction. So maybe we're not supposed to attack with the Scorch Spitter. If they don't block the spitter, then that's fine, since then the troll will still have 2 damage, so if they remove the counter and give hexproof, it still dies. I guess we can just attack with our 2-drops uh, here. And then we can shock if they block and play Pegasus. Alright, so any reason to shock right now as opposed to waiting? Uh, I guess if they have like a disfigure, I would rather get the damage on it first. So 
So we did 2-4 on ourselves, but that's fine. One's not looking great. Yeah, we were kind of in an awkward spot since if we equip the Spitter, then it still doesn't attack profitably into the Crasher. Otherwise, the Pegasus can't attack alone. So, yeah, this is pretty awkward. Could attack with everyone. They probably still block the Spitter. And we get in five damage, which may or may not be worth it. We do have a double Smuggler coming up, so that represents a lot of evasive damage. Don't necessarily need to get up to Dracoseth mana to win this game. I think we send everyone... So, do we want to change the blade? Let's say we draw a third land for Smuggler, and then we can make whatever unblockable. So I guess it doesn't really matter whether or not we change the blade if we do draw the lands for Smuggler. Let's just pass. Oh, that's a nice one. Whenever a creature dies, they gain a life and draw cards, so let's try not to kill any creatures. Alright, so I think I'm... Just getting into one extra point here. Although this is awkward, since the problem here is if we lose a soldier token, then we no longer have something to target with the smuggler other than the Pegasus, and the Pegasus, of course, can't attack alone. So if we attack to get in three points of damage, then we'll have to wait until we play the second smuggler before the Pegasus can attack. So maybe we're just supposed to pass a turn. Since we don't really have, like, a shock in hand to maybe help us close out this game... All we need here is time, since eventually we'll draw the third land, and eventually we'll get two smugglers going. But this attack is bad news, since it probably means they have another uh, big creature incoming, and they're not afraid of getting in the red zone. In this type of position, the best we can see from the opponent is like a no attack, and then playing conservatively, because that gives us time to kind of draw out of it. Cutthroats, again, kind of in the exact same spot as last turn, which is pretty awkward. Oh well, I mean, sometimes you are stuck on two. Still don't have any great blocks, also this kind of discourages us from blocking in the first place. But uh, we're probably not winning this one. War Chief. Still nothing. Well, we had a promising start. But, uh. Can't win them all. So now we could double block the War Chief, I guess. But we're just not winning this one. Maybe they'll show us some extra card here. That could matter in the next game. Alright, Siphon. I guess that's useful information still. Alright, so our opponent's on black-green, kind of mid rangey big creatures. How do we want to approach this matchup? Flying seems kind of nice. So I don't mind the second Angelic Gifts. Uh, how do we feel about Fire Elemental? Kind of just trades off for a lot of their creatures. But maybe that's what we need. If we're on the back foot, although we're going to be on the play here, hopefully we can have a more aggressive start. Um, the shocks don't seem great. They didn't show a lot of creatures that die to shock. The one seems pretty bad. So that can easily go out as well. Aegis could be okay in this matchup, just tapping down a big blocker for a turn. Act of Treason could be reasonable. I think I do like the Act of Treason. Still gonna keep in Dracoseth. Not every game is gonna be hyper aggressive, and in some games we're gonna get to seven, and then it might win the game. Although our opponent is playing black, they could have murder to kill Dracoseth. Berserker's not great here since they're not playing white. Inquisitor's kinda medium. Although it is just a two drop. Maybe just shave the Inquisitor anyway. Let's try this. 
All right, so I guess we'll keep. Nice curve. And again, Drunkoseth chilling in her opening hand. Drawing Drunkoseth a bit too often in her opening seven, but... Always nice to know he's uh, ready to jump in once the game goes late. And Spitter does play well with the Spitfire. And a Smuggler too. Alright, so we've got a reasonable looking curve. So, I think I'll Spitfire here over Smuggler. Just set up for more damage next turn. Alright. Can just attack with everyone. Do they have a murder? They don't, so I think we're gonna murder our opponent here. Alright, easy peasy. So, any changes now that we're on the draw? Actually, I didn't consider the Steadfast Sentry, which could be okay, as it can trade off for the 4-3 Trampler we saw. And it's still just a nice, aggressive... Uh, creature if we need it to be. So that could be an option. Act of Treason a little bit less effective now that we're on the draw, but still seems fine if we can have a nice curve out draw and then kind of steal their one big creature to get in a big chunk of damage and then close out the game with some flying creatures with Angelic Gift. Opponent's probably going to be looking for a hand that can interact early, puts cheap stuff into play. Which makes it maybe more likely that Dracoseth and our late game plan is going to be useful. This one, sadly, we can't keep. Alright, this hand's pretty awkward, but I'll keep. And then we can probably put a land on the bottom. Alright, Chandra could be good. So we're looking at Ancestral Blade. Now we can play Smuggler on three, so that's a nice one. And then Angelic Gift to maybe give us some evasion. Opponent's deck seems really slow. But it also means that uh, once we get to the mid to late game, they can have some powerful plays. And there's a Crasher. So pacifism seems totally reasonable here. So I guess we Angelic Gift the Soldier token, see what we draw, but I doubt we'll draw anything that changes our play. But I think I do want to get this in play just to use our mana efficiently here. Right, Spitfire's nice. So next turn we could even play Chandra, make two red mana and play Spitfire, if we think that's what we need. Ooh, Shock, never mind. So now we can Chandra plus Shock the Warchief. I mean, it's still reasonable to make two mana, play Spitfire, and then have Shock to go face next turn, but then Chandra's gonna be threatened by the Warchief. I think we just want to keep their board clear. And then it shouldn't be too difficult to get those slice points of damage in with all our evasive threats. Thief is another good target for Chandra. Alright, Rabbit Bind taking out our flyer, that's fine. So, we can kill the Thief, play Spitfire, and equip the Smuggler attack, force them to block with the Skeleton. Any reason to not use Chandra first? I don't think so. Yeah, we don't want our opponent double blocking the smuggler. So I imagine they'll chum block here. I 
Yeah, the plus one also still pumps the Spitfire. This is only plus two plus so, whereas this is plus three plus so, but I guess it's close enough. And I guess I want to empty my hands. Sure, why not? And then probably move the blade onto the Spitfire here, so it survives the three damage siphon. And it only had one damage marked on it, so it didn't die after we moved the equipment. If it had two damage on it, moving the equipment would have been a bad idea. Is this Siphon on Smuggler? Or are they just getting back Skeleton and replaying it? And we have the mana potentially to cast a Dracoseth if we draw it next turn, with Chandra minusing to add double red. So yeah, there's a Siphon on the Smuggler, so glad we moved the Blade onto the Spitfire, since I think it's probably going to be more impactful than the Smuggler, even though they're both pretty good. And a Brawler to draw. So let's plus. Attack for four. Now any reason to move the blade? Don't think so. So if they just replay skeleton, we're in great shape. In fact, can we kill them here if we minus Chandra on the Skeleton? This hits for 4, 6, I guess we're 1 point short. So we can't quite kill the opponents if we deal 2 to their face. Then this pumps for 3, that's 5 damage. I guess it works. If they don't have any interaction. They could have a Blade Brand here, but then they're dead if that's the only play they have, so I think we're fine attacking with a Brawler. And our opponent's dead. Alright, sweet. Alright, so we had some Mulligans, but we still had some nice curve out draws, opponent with a slightly slower deck. And we were able to kind of go underneath. And some key removal spells as well to kind of clear a path. Alright, so far so good. Being on the play helps. Ooh, this hand might be able to use Chandra for mana to cast Dracuseth. We're pretty all in on this kind of plan since we don't have any other creatures for pressure. But we do have Shock and Outrage to clear a path to protect Chandra, so it's a relatively realistic plan, especially on the play. So we'll keep. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can cast a turn 5 Dracuseth, would be pretty sweet. We'll need to draw two more lands in order to do so. Step one. And then have our opponent not pressure Chandra enough. Counter spells would also be bad for this plan. Ooh, Spitfire was a great draw. So let's get that out there. Plays great with Chandra. Plays great with Chandra's Outrage. Just a very synergistic card in our deck. Alright. So ideally they play a two toughness creature that dies to Chandra. So here we can Chandra minus on the Seer, and there's our fifth land, so next turn we can cast a Dracoseth. So it's go time. Could also plus attack, and even if they hit Chandra for two, that's fine. I think I would rather just get this dead. <laughs> Alright, just tap out for a random creature. Perfect. Although Cloudkins here is a good one, opponent having two of those in their deck is going to make it difficult for the next couple games. But, for now, let's uh, just cast a Dracoseth. Any reason to make mana first or attack first? Yeah, let's just do this now. I'm getting the hang of this magic thing. All right, well, mission accomplished. 
It might even be okay to keep the Spitfire back on defense here. It looks like they have a shock for Chandra. All right. So the reason not to attack with the Spitfire if they didn't have the shock was in case they have like an unsummon for Dracoseth. Then we want Chandra still in play to provide mana to replay Dracoseth. Now if they unsummon Dracoseth, we'll need to replay it naturally. So I guess we might as well attack with the Spitfire here. And hope they don't bounce our Dracoseth. Dracoseth also a nice combo with a Chandra Spitfire here, by the way. Not that it needs any help. So yeah, if we get to untap an attack with Dracoseth, the game's over. And there's not much our opponent can have, honestly. They could have like the blue enchantment that taps it down, they could have an unsummon to buy some time. But that's about it. Alright, sweet, so turn 5 Dracoseth, GG. Not bad. So against blue reds, we did see two Cloudkins, so I do like the wand. A Raptor could be fine, although it dies to shock, which is a bit embarrassing for a 4 drop. Don't see anything amazing in the sideboard. Don't think we need another Angelic Gift. Opponent's gonna have plenty of flyers themselves. Let's try again. And, I mean, the cards our opponent saw from our deck were like a Spitfire, a Chandra, and a Dracoseth. So the way they're sideboarding might not line up against our aggressive plan, which is kind of our plan A. Dracoseth is kind of plan B. So if they over sideboard to beat Dracoseth, then we could potentially just beat them with our beatdown plan. Alright, and this looks like a pretty solid beatdown draw. Marauder Sax. So, let's see if they have the Cloudkin on 3 again. Or maybe a shock for the Berserker. Right, looks like they're just keeping up a shock most likely. So whatever creature we play is probably going to get shocked. So if you play the Smuggler, they probably have an answer for it. Although playing the Spitter is just so many inefficient since we don't even get to shock since we only have single red. So I think we are kind of still forced to Smuggler here. Even though I expect us to get dealt with. Alright, maybe not. So yeah, the beatdown plan is looking pretty good. Opponent could cast uh, Paralysis or Chandra's Outrage here. Or a Brawler. Mountain's a good draw. Pacifism seems like the most straightforward play. Could also try and do something tricky with a Shock, but that would result in a 2 for 1, which seems bad. Could also use a Smuggler's ability, but then we're not taking advantage of the other Smuggler. So I think we'll just uh, keep it simple. Alright, so points down to 10 already. We've got a bit of reach here with Shock. The Smugglers can provide some evasion. So we're looking good. Alright, it's not bad. Some 1-1 one -one blockers. So now we have to rely on these smugglers to get in. So if they deal with the smugglers, we're in trouble. As long as smugglers are alive, we're fine. I don't think I'm shocking face quite yet. I have plenty of mana anyway. And there's Dracoseth in case our plan A of beating down doesn't work out. Let's just smuggle two of our creatures here. Get in for five, we've got a two-turn clock. And shock means that uh, they have to do something pretty special this turn to survive, and our opponent just explodes, so we got them in game 1 with Dracoseth, and we got them in game 2 with the Smugglers. Not bad. So pretty clean for a no so far, I think we picked up one loss along the way. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty nice opening hand. So 
So the protection from white might finally be relevant. Next turn I'm probably gonna play the Diamond Knight and then we can follow it up with Spitfire plus Shock to grow the Knight. Alright, Frostlings will do the job here. So that's gonna slow us down a bit, but that's okay. Let's just play the Diamond Knight naming red. We've got Shock that can kind of catch us back up for just one mana. And this Diamond Knight's about to get pretty big. So we'll take it. Do they pump the sprites? They do. Alright, opponent keeping up 3 mana, maybe for a Convolute. So, I think this is maybe a good turn for the Spitter, which we don't really mind if it gets countered. And then we'll see if they have a, a reaction. And then we can still play the Spitfire afterwards if we want to. So yeah, they definitely have something here. So rather than play into the Convolutes, I think uh, I would rather just hang on to the Spitfire. Although just casting the Spitfire will grow the Knights, so even if they Convolute the Spitfire, this will still become a 3-3. But I think I would rather just use a Shock. Now do we shock right now? I think we shock in their turn, so that if they have a Convolute they have to waste the mana in their turn, even though we miss out on a damage on the Knight. Play the planes in case we draw Cavalier, haven't seen Cavalier in action yet this uh, set of matches. But we do have one in the deck. So we'll just pass a turn, keep up shock. I think I'll wait to see what they do, because we could maybe ambush the Frost Lynx if it attacks, if we grow the Knight at instant speed. So Lynx is attacking, so if we just block the Lynx with the Knight and then shock the Sprite, that would be nice if they don't have anything. And even if they do have Convolute for Shock, the Knight would still ambush the Lynx. Now if they have a Pump Spell for the Lynx, things get a little tricky, because we're forced to Shock before damage to save the Knight. And if they then respond with a Pump Spell on the Lynx, we would be sad. But there's not too many Pump Spell for single White that they could have here. Befuddle would not be the end of the world, since the knight would still survive. So I think I'm gonna go for it. And again, the knight grows when we cast a shock, so even if they counter the shock, the knight will still be a 3-3, so counter spells are not a concern. Alright, and we got to eat the frost links for free. Not bad. And an Executioner. Alright. So they could still have a Negate here, which could counter the Reduced Ashes. Although they probably would have negated the Shock to save the Sprite, I think. So I think I'll just Reduce the Ashes the Executioner to save the Knight. And then this has Protection, and I'm fine if this trades and we get a big attack in. So they can either chump the knight or trade for the spitter. Opponent's down to 7. And again, we have a Draco Seth in hand, so if the game does go along, we still have a plan B. Waiting in the wings. Opponent says go. We're under no obligation of playing into a counterspell here, we can just attack. And our opponent dies, alright. So, up against the blue-white kind of flyer tempo, maybe with some counter spells, even though we didn't actually see any. How do we want to approach this? How good is a wand going to be? They could definitely have some cloudkins in their deck. A wand makes it so they can pump the sprite, otherwise we can kill it. So it seems reasonable. Could board in the second angelic gift just to have more flyers, although it can be weak to kind of frost links and bounce spells. In general, don't think we need to go up to Fire Elemental, especially if they have cards like Convolute. We want to keep the curve as low as possible. A Raptor could be fine. It blocks opposing flares pretty well. So I could see making room for the Raptor over 
Not sure what. Maybe the Vanguard's not great if they have a lot of flyers themselves, but still seems good enough. We actually haven't cast it yet. Maybe the wand is still too slow. I guess I'll shave a wand for a raptor here. And then if we see more wand toughness stuff, we'll reconsider. Alright, the sand seems fine. So... Let's see if this raptor is going to be better than wand this game. Do we shock a 2-drop? I guess it depends which one. I guess we're not being very subtle here. Alright, I think we get the Vanguard out there first. And then uh, we'll try to make as many soldier tokens as possible. Could also use a smuggler to make the token unblockable before the opponent gets a chance to block. Although that probably requires full control, so we get the chance to activate smuggler before blocks. Ooh, Angel Vitality. It's a pretty good target for shock. Just shock it right now seems fine, and then play a blade. Yeah, the alternative was using Smuggler on the Sky Knight, but then they can just block the Soldier for free. Alright, Cloudkin. So, if Raptor was once, a Wand would have lined up pretty well. But it doesn't block the 1-1 one -one tokens we get from the Vanguard here, which is important. Alright, never mind. So, we could just play the Raptor. Or we could smuggle the vanguard attack with everyone, they block the 2-2, two, two, take 3. Which is okay. Is it better than playing the raptor? Probably. Yeah, we could have moved the equipment to the Vanguard if we wanted to play the Untap Land. I think I wanted to play the Krang this turn, so if we draw our Reduced to Ashes or the Cavalier, we can play it next turn. But it's definitely a consideration here to get in one more damage, since they're priced into blocking the 2-2 Soldier. And then next turn we can play Raptor and equip. If we don't draw a 5-drop. That's fine. All right, so we're just working our way up towards Drakoseth, which can hopefully take over the game. For now, I guess we're equipping and making unblockable. Get in for two. And if they want to counter this Raptor, that's fine by me. Doesn't really add anything at the moment, since we can only smuggle one creature and they can block the Raptor with the Seer. So yeah, they probably have a counter spell in hand, but just decided to let the Raptor resolve, since it's not too relevant. Although you never know, they could have just been holding on to Anticipate, which held priority. I guess we can make the Raptor unblockable and then put the blade on it. Which gets us one more point of damage. So I mean, we're pressuring the opponent, they do eventually have to answer our smuggler. But... I don't think I'm tapping out for Dracoseth if they have three mana up next turn. Yeah, probably should have actually moved the blades second main so we can do the trick again without having to invest one additional mana. But I guess we've got plenty of mana anyway here. 
Alright, so let's see. This at least plays around convolutes, so I probably want to lead with the Pegasus before we start moving equipment around. Alright, so let's move this onto whatever. Bit of back and forth. I guess I'll play out my lands. Maybe that incentivizes them to tap out since they don't think we have any threats in hand. All right, Cavalier. So that's definitely going to bait out a response from the opponents, which can clear a path for Dracoseth. Or we can just keep doing what we're doing. Again, I forgot to probably move the blade. Would have been maybe better to do that. I think I'm fine if the Cavalier gets countered, honestly. And now we still have two mana to move blade and move it back. So let's see that Convolute. Hopefully it's not a Bone to Ash. Alright, in that case, let's kill that. Could have also killed the Pacifism or the Vanguard itself. But this allows for an attack with our Flyers, which seems better. And then we can just make Pegasus unblockable and attack for 5. The reason to move the blade last turn is so that we didn't need to invest some mana to unequip the raptor to then target it with a smuggler and then re-equip the blade. So, who knows, maybe they have a planar cleansing in hand here, that could also make sense. Um, so let's move the blade. I guess we want to equip a random soldier. I think I want to equip a soldier just to maybe go wide and attack with everyone next turn. Diversify our damage a little bit. Yeah, it's the first time we actually cast a Cavalier here. And it was our first pick. So Planar Cleansing would be the most obvious way out for the opponents, but I'm sure there's other ways. They could potentially still win. Alright, got a Winged Words drawing two. Octoprophets. So they've got three blockers at the moment. Moat. So they're just that to the flyers here. Alright, GG's. Do we show them the Dracoseth? Why not? Alright, the Pegasus can't attack alone, so I guess the Raptor can go across the finish line here. And a hat explosion. Alright, sweet. So we got the five wins. I think we lost one game along the way. So I didn't necessarily have the highest hopes for the deck when I saw it in the, the final build, but yeah, just a solid curve. A few individual bombs definitely pulled their weight as well. Drunkus has definitely won a few games by himself, and then uh, Cavalier in the end seemed pretty decent too. And then just the plan of having those evasive goblins was pretty big as well, just giving us that reach to help us close out the game after getting in a big chunk of damage early. So yeah, some elemental synergies as well that uh, came to fruition. So pretty happy with uh, the draft here, so let's claim our prize and crack some packs. A random Ravnica Legions booster hanging out. Why not? And let's take a look at the M20 packs here. So pack one, pick one. Ooh, Embodiment of Agonies. That's an interesting card to evaluate. So this could pair well with any way of filling the graveyard, which you can find typically in black-green. In black there's the, the Vulture that can mill some cards. I'm not sure if there's a ton of green cards that can put stuff in the graveyard. I guess there's some rares that do that. But typically speaking, in a game of Limited, you can expect cards to end up in the graveyard. It doesn't take much for the embodiment to be decent. It does have Death Touch, so even just a 1-1 embodiment can always play defense. 
pretty effectively. And then once you get into the late game, this becomes a pretty big threat. So I think this card is quite good, but um, it will kind of vary how good it is depending on kind of how controlling the deck is, how much removal you have, how many ways you have of putting cards in the graveyard without just uh, the cards going there naturally. Then we also have Murder in the pack, so it's actually close here between the two. Murder is also excellent, just uh, unconditional removal at instant speed. And there's also some synergies with uh, spells going to the graveyard that you can maybe get back in blue-black. And uh, yeah, it's tough to beat the efficiency of murder. So yeah, pack one, pick one. I think it would lean murder over the embodiment, but it's close. All right, well, another embodiment showing up here. It's kind of the flying version of the Satch Scorpion that can potentially get bigger. But I think this time I would probably take the embodiment. Herald of the Sun is also quite decent, even though it is somewhat expensive, but 6 mana. With a nice late game ability and a 4-4 four -four flyer can stabilize the skies nicely. Then we've got a Dungeon guys, definitely a nice rare as well, both being a threat and a removal spell all in one. And some removal spells don't even kind of uh, free up the creature that's chained by the Geists, the various enchantment-based removal spells, for example, in blue and white. So it shines especially in those matchups, but also just a 4-mana 3-3 three, three flyer is pretty great by itself. So someone in uh, the previous uh, videos Explain it pretty well, just kind of your Chillbringer on steroids, one mana cheaper and it locks down permanently. And Chillbringer was already a pretty decent limited card. And then uh, Winged Words is also a nice one. Convolute, I'm not sure yet where I land on this card. It's usually pretty obvious if the opponent has it, but the format is pretty grindy, people play pretty expensive cards. So in those matchups Convolute can be fine, even if uh, it does kind of drop off in the late game. But uh, not great against aggressive decks like the one we had in this draft. Got a Scheming Symmetry. I don't think this card is particularly good for limited. It puts you down a card, the opponent gets to search up their best card as well, and it's going to be difficult to break the Symmetry in limited for this card, so I'm not a fan. Um, I am a fan of these other uncommons here. The Lich is quite good helping you draw and discard, improve your draw, maybe set up some graveyard synergies, and then Death Touch and Lifelink means it's always relevant. And then the Mask is also a nice one. The entire cycle of these equipment is pretty good and limited. And this one can give you some additional reach in maybe a Go White deck as well. And then uh, Audacious Thief is a nice common as well that can maybe provide repeatable card draw. If you can keep clearing a path, plays great alongside the Smuggler in red as you can uh, keep attacking with it that way as well. So just a pretty nice card at common. We've got a Temple of Melody. I do like the Scry Lands. I think if you're at least one color that overlaps with the temples and you don't have any synergies that require you to have certain basics, like maybe the Dread Presence that requires Swamp specifically, I would always be happy to play Temple just as a enter the battlefield tap land that scries one for the most part, unless maybe your deck is like hyper aggressive and you just don't want to play any tap lands, so context matters there as well. Uh, so not a very high pick, but I would be happy to put that in my black or green decks. Uh, Chandra is great, as we saw in this draft, just providing a ton of utility, and if you can pick up some elementals it gets even better. Uh, Apostle's fine as a 2 mana 2-1 two with pro black with a somewhat relevant ability. So I think of the cycle of protection creatures, the Apostle and the Red 2-drop we saw in action are probably among the better ones that you can main deck, whereas maybe something like the Cerulean Drake is more of a sideboard card. And uh, yeah, we'll probably take the Chandra out of this pack. And yeah, there's a Berserker we were just talking about, the Blind Beetle. Blight Beetle is also probably more of a sideboard card, much like the Cerulean Drake. And a rare is a Wakeroot Elemental. 6 mana 5-5 five five is not the best, the ability being 
five green mana to activate is somewhat uh, restrictive. So it is a powerful effect if you do get to the late game, uh, but it's no Nissa, of course. But uh, yeah, if you're heavy green, maybe with some ramp, then the elemental could be a nice one. Not sure if I would take it over a Cloudkin Seer, which is just a nice efficient common. I didn't even see the murder, which would probably be the pick here over Cloudkin Seer, but they're both among the best commons in their respective colors. But probably gonna take the murder over the elemental even. But yeah, all three of these cards are pretty excellent, and then the Berserker's also fine. So pretty stacked back. Alright, so that's gonna do it for our first drafts. Even got some nice packs to evaluate afterwards. So got a lot of uh, information in this one, so hopefully you enjoyed if you're watching this on YouTube. Otherwise, you can always check out the Twitch channel as well for some live drafts like this one. Twitch.tv forward slash LegendVD, stream three times a week. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today for this video. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.